2013 is when we can say the seeds for blockchain 2.0 were laid out. The only use case for blockchain cannot be cryptocurrencies, right? There had to be more. Let's continue with the history to find out. 2013 was particularly interesting for Bitcoin. The prices started at $13.3, rising up to $1,163 on November 30th. But that wasn't it. Countries like India began to take notice of this digital currency. By June 2013, there were more than a dozen crypto assets listed on coin market cap already. In March of 2013, the blockchain temporarily split into two independent chains with different rules as Bitcoin version 0.8 was released. The two blockchains operated simultaneously for six hours, each with its own version of the Bitcoin protocol. Normal operation was restored when the majority of the network downgraded to version 0.7 of the Bitcoin software. It took about six hours. People voluntarily downgraded their Bitcoin uh, software, so they let go of their earnings for that duration. The US Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, established regulatory guidelines for decentralized virtual currencies, such as Bitcoin, classifying American Bitcoin miners who sell their generated Bitcoins as money service businesses, or MSBs. And they are subject to the registration and other legal obligations. Between April 10 and 12, just one day, Bitcoin prices rose to 259 US dollars and then crashing by 83% to $45. This is still considered to be one of the deadliest crash in Bitcoin prices. On May 15, 2013, US authorities seized accounts associated with Mt. Gox after discovering it had not registered as a money transmitter with the FinCEN in the US. The Japanese exchange lost its money to a US Homeland Security investigation because they were not registered as a money transmitter. Homeland Security investigation seized $2.9 million from an account owned by the Mt. Gox subsidiary that was used to process payments to and from US customers. Now, the future of Bitcoin, legally speaking, was uncertain. In October, FBI shuts down Silk Road and arrests the man behind it. Ross William Ulbrich, aka Dread Pirate Roberts, was convicted of crimes such as computer hacking, conspiracy to traffic narcotics, and money laundering, and is currently serving double life sentence without a parole. FBI actually seized about 26,000 bitcoins from Silk Road. It will be in October also that Canada launches the first ever Bitcoin ATM. Within India, multiple exchanges such as CoinMonk, Buttercoins, Buy and Sell Bitco.in popped up, which would later renamed as Unocoin and Zeppe, becoming pioneers of India for Bitcoin trade. Actually, in Mumbai in 2013, a pizzeria started accepting Bitcoin for payments. That is what prompted the government, not the government, but the RBI, to release its first caution against Bitcoin and other digital currencies. On November 20th, speaking at an economic forum, E. Gang, the deputy governor of People's Bank of China and director of the state's administration of foreign exchange, said it would be impossible for China's central bank to recognize the Bitcoin as legitimate financial instrument in the near future. But Mr. E added that people are free to participate in the Bitcoin market and he would personally adopt a long-term perspective on that currency. However, on December 5th, the People's Bank of China prohibited Chinese financial institutions from using Bitcoins. This was in 2013. As I said earlier, similarly on December 24th, the Reserve Bank of India cautioned the users in India on use of virtual currencies as well. Since Bitcoin wasn't the only currency by 2013, it is important that we acknowledge the other ones as well. It was also in 2013 that a Shiba Inu dog, the, the popular online meme, is transitioned to build a cryptocurrency, Dogecoin. Doge will go on to mine its 100 billionth coin in 2015 and become super popular for tipping on social media. A worthless coin created for memes, today in 2019 has a market cap of $331 million. $331 million for a meme coin. Then comes XRP. The XRP ledger is built on open source technology since 2013. However, the company RippleNet, their employees own 60% of the XRP coins. The company can operate independent of XRP and vice versa. 
triple net is servicing banks without pushing the use of XRP coins as of today and that has been creating a doubt about XRP's real use case ever since its inception. People also say that XRP isn't decentralized enough because it's owned a lot of it is owned by the company's employees themselves. In 2013, Vitalik Buterin proposed the development of Ethereum, a smart contract enabled blockchain platform which would pave way for developers to launch decentralized applications, run what we now know as initial coin offerings and tokenization for several services. It must be noted that Buterin at the time was actually working with Bitcoin magazine and he was unhappy with how Bitcoin was progressing as a service or as a blockchain or as a digital currency. He has been famously quoted to say that Bitcoin is working on problems like it's a Swiss knife, one thing at a time. The, the beginning of 2014 wasn't that great. Mount Gox gets hacked and then subsequently they, have, they are going to file for bankruptcy. This was reported in the media and I quote, After putting an abrupt halt to withdrawals on February 6, claiming that a hacker had exploited their own poorly implemented software to the use of transaction mailability attacks, Disgraced Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox's website and trading engine go blank without official comment. Other exchanges and Bitcoin businesses issue a joint statement condemning the mismanagement, deception and eventual collapse brought by the executives of the Japan-based exchange. After an alleged leak of internal documents showed that 744,000 Bitcoins were lost in this deception. Later in the year, in an article titled The Face Behind Bitcoin, journalist Le McGrath, good man, claims to have found the creator of Bitcoin. Dorian Nakamoto denied any involvement in Bitcoin. Goodman claimed that she asked Nakamoto about his involvement in Bitcoin, to which he had replied he is no longer associated in it. However, Nakamoto in subsequent interviews claimed to have misunderstood the question and thought it was about his previous work for the government. At the same time, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS of the US, declared that Bitcoin is a property, not a currency which made it subject to capital gains tax, which we are still confused on how it must be calculated. For example, if you convert your bitcoins to Ethereum, you still have to pay tax on it in the US. I don't know about, the in about India, we are still debating that. By the middle of the year, in June, the popularity of the GHS mining pool led them to acquire 51% of the mining hash power. You must know that 51% would mean that the mining pool could do transactions and then reverse them and just get away with it. However, the mining pool uh, concluded or they rather released a statement that they want to limit their hashing power to 39.99% so they asked the users or the miners to actually move to other mining pools which was very nice of them I guess. So later on, remember the Silk Road acquisition that happened with the FBI seizing about 26, 27,000 bitcoins. The US Marshals finally sold them off. Actually, they auctioned them off. And all the auctions were actually won by Tim Draper. And we all know how much he is worth today. He got those 30,000 bitcoins for just $18 million. Today, they are worth $150 million. And he has more. And he has invested in all of the blockchain companies. Also in 2014, companies such as Dell and Microsoft started accepting payments. Now this is where Bitcoin started going mainstream. By the end of 2014, even Braintree, which is a subsidiary of PayPal, started accepting Bitcoin. But 2014 did not end well because Charlie Shreem, the CEO of Bitcoin exchange BitInstant, was sentenced to two years in prison for his role in laundering money for users of Silk Road. Shreem surrendered $950,000 in a plea bargain with the sentence. One thing for sure we can determine here is the Silk Road is where Bitcoin mainstream adoption started, unfortunately. And that is where, as much as we don't like it, we have come to this point where Bitcoin has become a mainstream adopted cryptocurrency. Right, let's talk about other cryptocurrencies of 2014. On January 6, 2014, Kanye West's lawyer sent, a, sent the development team a cease and desist order, the development team of a coin called Kanye West. Because obviously the name was pretty similar to Kanye West and it was a trademark infringement and it was, it was also considered an unfair competition and cyber piracy and dilution. For whatever reasons, Kanye uh, then rebranded their coin from Kanye West to just Kanye 
but Kanye's lawyers weren't happy about that as well and eventually they filed a lawsuit and the Kanye coins creator the creators of the Kanye coins had to close their entire operation that was the beginning and end of Kanye West cryptocurrency tokens you know as people began to realize that bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies aren't completely private or anonymous there was an emerging need for a privacy focused cryptocurrency and that need was fulfilled by monero the time is april of 2014 monero launches with an obfuscated public ledger meaning anybody can broadcast or send transactions but not out, no outside observer nobody can tell the source the amount or the destination this would then go on to become the preferred cryptocurrency for ransom demands by hackers i feel like every time something new happens it it ends up ends up in the wrong industry and then takes over the right industry in 2014 jay jade maclab founder of mount gox and co-founder of ripple launched the network system stellar with former lawyer joyce kim this was the first version of this website was called the secret blockchain project because they did not want people to find out but at the end of the day stellar and ripple are sort of doing the same thing it was more like a competition to ripple and less like a new cryptocurrency to be very honest middle of the year ethereum launched one of the earliest crowdfunding campaigns or initial coin offerings as we know now and they raised about 2.3 million dollars worth of bitcoins at the time i think it was about 3700 bitcoins Ethereum will go on to launch early 2015. Speaking of 2015, let's talk about what happened to Bitcoin in 2015. The year began with a major hack of a European exchange Bitstamp. Today also it is considered as one of the biggest hacks in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Some unknown hackers were able to steal 18,866 Bitcoins from Bitstamp's operational hot wallet. That was roughly about 5.2 million dollars then. In a few days the exchange was operational again assuring clients that their wallets were safe and untouched and they kind of disguised the incident as a learning exercise at the same time the big guys the other big guys started entering the space coinbase launched its us exchange winkle was the famous facebook twins they launched their own exchange they announced the launch of their own exchange gemini on the other hand ross ulbrich the man behind the dark net drug marketplace silk road which we have talked about already so many times was given a life sentence then new york state released the bit license set of customized rules meant to regulate bitcoin and digital currency businesses that serve customers located in new york state this was again in 2015 when new york state had different regulations for bitcoin businesses than other states of the us even today a bit license a license to operate a bitcoin business in new york state costs $5000 talking about silk road again former federal agents carl force and sean bridges actually admitted to stealing bitcoins when they were doing their investigation of silk road they were fined $500000 and force was actually imprisoned for 6 years imagine law enforcement people investigating you and then also exploiting your earnings as well as extorting money out of you We have seen that happen in India as well in 2017 we heard about a case of police officers kidnapping a businessman and then demanding ransom in bitcoin that happened in surat in gujarat in india also in 2015 mark carpelis the ceo of the failed bitcoin exchange mount gox was arrested in japan on charges of fraud and embezzlement in relation to the collapse of that exchange But some good news did come in June the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC announced their consideration of bitcoin as a commodity that means people can now trade in futures and other contracts of bitcoin more good news as bitcoin got a front page feature on the economist in November of 2015 by the end of the year core developer mike hearn left bitcoin calling it a failure the bitcoin community accused him of defaming bitcoin for his new employer r3 Uh, it was just, which was working on its own blockchain project now this is how things work in the decentralized ecosystem right the event is popularly known as hernia besides bitcoin there is only one real project that we can talk about in 2015 and that was ethereum ethereum paved way for decentralized applications smart contracts and trading of cryptocurrency assets between with between users without the need of any third party it was 
it is widely considered as one of the most decentralized networks even today you know the first ever version of ethereum was actually called frontier and it launched in early 2015 now the world was ready for a major upgrade on blockchain 2.0 was becoming a reality with the launch of ethereum but it did not stop at that the focus was now moving towards solving barriers like scalability efficiency and network and overall features of a decentralized network while blockchain 2.0 had begun the 3.0 was being conceptualized in the next part we will talk about ethereum and many other projects along with those that are now working towards blockchain 3.0 ecosystem but things are going to get ugly in 2016 and later so let's move to part 3